Welcome to the museum. Uh, today's going to be a very special day uh, with very, um, a rare opportunity to hear some very important speakers about Louis Kahn. Um, I wanted to say, of course, the, uh, the reason that we're here, that the exhibition is here, um, the most obvious reason is that San Diego is home to the Salk Institute, one of the most spectacular um, and inspiring works of modern architecture in the world. Um, but moreover, Khan has made two very important, in my view, contributions to um, the world of architecture that I think deserve special mention um, and that continue to inspire architects today. Um, the first is a sense of timelessness and eternity, as in the architecture of antiquity, ancient Egypt, Greece, and Rome, um, as opposed to the early 20th century modern architecture, which um, was often seen as uh, very white, light, and weightless, Kahn returned a sense of mass and weight to architecture, embodying it with a sense of permanence. The second is a mirroring of form and function. If we look at the Salk Institute and its site as a center for biomedical research and think about the essential building blocks of life or a molecular structure, with Kahn's architecture, you find a central form that is interlocking and repeated, seemingly without a beginning or an end. And this was a real revolution, rev revelation in architecture. But also, uh, Kahn was a humanist, and he fuses this concept with a spiritual uplifting, looking at the sight lines to the setting sun and the Pacific Ocean. So today we're here to discuss Louis Kahn in more detail with real experts. Um, and we have with us today Dr. Ariel Plotek, uh, who was our in-house curator for this project, as well as Kahn's biographer, Dr. Wendy Lesser, the foremost Kahn scholar and co-curator of this exhibition, Dr. William Whitaker from the Architectural Archives at the University of Pennsylvania, and Getty Architectural Conservation Specialist, Sarah Lardinois, who is currently managing the restoration of the Salk Institute. So first to introduce Dr. Ariel Plotek. Um, Ariel oversees modern and contemporary art in our museum. Uh, he has collaborated with contemporary artists, uh, including Joel Shapiro, Larry Bell, Ron Nagel, and currently Richard Deacon. He's taught, at, he's taught the history of modern art at the University of San Diego and served as editor of Tabula Quarterly, an online review of exhibitions and books on art. Prior to San Diego, Ariel worked at the Montreal Museum of Fine Arts and Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. He specialized in modern art at the Courtauld Institute in London and received his PhD from NYU's Institute of Fine Art, completing his dissertation in Paris under the aegis of the Sorbonne. <laughs> so, um, Dr. Plotex is um, going to be taking us through a behind-the-scenes look at the exhibition and how it was assembled with its many different components, including models, plans, drawings, photographs, and more. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Dr. Plotek. Thank you very much. I'm thrilled to see so many of you uh, here today, and it really is a great honor for me to be um, on this, uh, this panel this morning. You'll have to wait a little longer um, for the real architecture experts, but I, um, let me introduce this subject as a, bit of a, as a bit of a layman. I have, however, been quite immersed in Louis Kahn and, um, and his architecture for the past, uh, gosh, I, I, well, it's been, it's been some time since we, we had um, arranged to have this exhibition come here. Um, and for, for the reasons that Anita has already mentioned, this was first and foremost the presence of the Salk Institute in La Jolla, and um, and it was our hope, and I think that we are seeing already that we were um, we were correct in in, in thinking this, that um, there's a tremendous attachment to that um, to that building uh, here in San Diego, and um, 
that it inspires, uh, well, like Louis Kahn himself, um, his work inspires a great devotion. And, um, and I see evidence of that when I speak to, to you, um, this audience today, and, and I'm learning how many people have come from uh, all over the country, and indeed, um, and, and, uh, and farther uh, still, to, to see this exhibition here in San Diego. So I'm very grateful to all of you for that. Um, as Anita uh, promised, I will be talking about the, the show, um, perhaps for those of you who have not yet had an opportunity to, to see it, and introducing a little bit the exhibition uh, here in San Diego. And before I get to the, um, the show that was organized by uh, the Vitra Design Museum, and I want to recognize the um, presence here in our audience of Joachim Eisenbrand, uh, curator at Vitra, and, and once again thank um, Bill Whitaker, who not only were, were they um, the, the reins, I would say, behind this um, project, but who've been tremendously helpful uh, to us in its installation. This is about as big a project as we have ever undertaken. I'll give you um, here's an image. Uh, oh, well, we're going to um, let me skip ahead to, to this here, a view of the, um, of the installation itself. And it really, it was all hands on deck for the past uh, two weeks installing this show. And it wouldn't have been possible without the help of our organizers. So I wanted to to thank them first. And, um, and also talk about the way that we've made this exhibition, um, sort of we've, we've adapted it to this, um, to this venue, and in part by tying it to this, um, to this community. And we did so by including the work of, um, of students from Woodbury University School of Architecture who have um, prepared their, we've selected, our education team selected 20 photographs um, by those students of the Salk Institute. And they are presented in a gallery adjacent to the exhibition. And this was a way for us both to, um, to tie the project to, the, to, this, to this, um, this city and, this, and, and the Salk um, Institute, but also to the, to the community of students who are here. And, um, and I, in particular, I found it very heartening to see when we've organized exhibitions of architecture and design before, how, um, how much these serve as teaching tools, that the, uh, the students are very present in the galleries, as is faculty. And, um, and it's very gratifying to see that, to, to see um, that we are able to really um, serve a sort of specialist audience at the same time as we are able to um, introduce many to a subject like this one that they will perhaps be um, less familiar with. So here's one of these um, photographs by the Woodbury University students. And, and what I've chosen in particular are the um, perhaps less familiar views of this, of this building. We have a um, we have an, a notion of that iconic view um, through the plaza to the Pacific. And, but the show also is an opportunity to um, get to know those lesser known aspects of, um, of Kahn's uh, oeuvre and his process. And, um, and in this respect, the show that was organized by Vitra differs from the one, um, the, the last major retrospective uh, in 1991. And, because that sort of story had been told once, um, it was possible to really focus on, on projects um, both built and unrealized um, in this show and present them in a way that will be um, well, grouped thematically and I think that will reveal sort of, um, that will in some ways cast the, the um, Khan's ideas in a new light. And um, this is a favorite of mine, just as a sort of a beautifully formally composed uh, photograph, again, taken by one of these students at Woodbury. And, um, and we are in a sort of slightly lower level here of the Salk's uh, laboratories and able to see the, um, the use of, of concrete, this, um, this um, raw concrete, this beton brut, that um, from whence comes the term brutalism that is sometimes applied to Kahn's architecture and that has, I think, in the English language, connotations that are perhaps um, rather, uh, that, are, that sound harsh and, um, and, and mechanical. And, um, but really, when we see the sort of, the, 
texture of Kahn's design at the Salk and, um, and the, the way in which this material, this, um, this concrete uh, with its, he, he'd essentially used a, um, a Roman recipe using volcanic ash, uh, lending a slightly pinkish tone to the, to the building's um, skin, which is beautifully captured in this, in this picture and in this light. Um, we, are, we are, I think, very much seduced by, um, by these buildings. Um, and this, this notion of sort of brutalism really falls away. Turning now to the exhibition as it is, um, well, it was, as it was first installed uh, in Germany, this is in fact a view of the, of the show at the Vitra Design Museum, and it gives you a sense of the range of materials that are presented. Um, the audiovisual components that include interviews with architects who were um, either students of Louis Kahn's or acquainted with him, or who simply speak to the influence that his, um, his designs have had upon their practice. Um, and there are models um, both from the, from the architect's studio and others created for the exhibition, of which I suppose this is the most um, remarkable. And it stands at the very entrance to the show here in San Diego. And it is a design for the city tower, um, which Khan proposed as a sort of a, this was an uncommissioned um, proposal, uh, a visionary um, idea that he had for the, for the transformation of, um, of Philadelphia's downtown uh, core, giving it a, a monument really like no other. And, um, and I think it's with this, um, with this particular design that I wanted to, to lead and, um, and to talk about the, the city of Philadelphia, which plays such an important role in the story of Kahn's uh, well, life and architecture that is told in the exhibition. And here we have, um, this is a model which I, I believe still uh, lives today in, the, um, in Philadelphia City Hall, I think outside the mayor's office. And this is a, a um, model of the City Hall of Philadelphia. This, um, this is Victorian sort of um, stone pile uh, that stands uh, now at one end of Benjamin Franklin Parkway leading us to the, um, to the uh, Philadelphia Museum of Art. And a fine example, both the, the parkway built in the early 20th century and the museum itself of the sort of Beaux-Arts style which, uh, which Kahn uh, came up in. And, um, and so we see, for example, the way that this, um, the parkway is this, is this kind of uh, Beaux-Arts intervention, you might say, a boulevard uh, laid diagonally across the grid that was built under William Penn um, in Philadelphia, one of the earliest uh, American cities to be designed in this way. <clears throat> and, um, and it really affords us an opportunity to see uh, how Kahn in his, in, his, um, in his designs departed from this sort of Beaux-Arts um, tradition, of which we see some evidence in the, in the drawings that he made as a student that are included in the show. And, um, and here again, I should acknowledge the fact that, the, um, that a large, uh, the show would simply wouldn't be possible without those loans from the, um, from the architectural archives at the University of Pennsylvania, and, um, and many loans from the, the family as well, um, from, from the Kahn family, um, particularly in the case of travel studies and, and other such um, works. So we return uh, again to the, um, to the, this is a detail of an earlier model of the, um, the city tower proposed by Kahn. And it allows us to uh, think a little bit about the role of um, scientific uh, investigation in Kahn's um, practice and in the shaping of his ideas, uh, coinciding as, these, as this did with the, um, the discovery of the double helix structure of DNA and um, and so we see the evidence of that in, this, um, in the design. And it leads us uh, also to the, to the Salk Institute um, by way of the Richards um, Medical Laboratories at the University of, um, of um, Pennsylvania. And, and it's something that um, I, think, I think that we, that sort of the role of, of science and engineering is, um, is one of the themes that is most beautifully explored in the exhibition, um, 
where we are fortunate to be able to draw also on the, uh, the university's architectural archives um, holdings of the work of uh, Robert Le Ricolet and Auguste Commandant, uh, engineers with whom um, Kahn collaborated closely. So here is the, um, the man himself standing under this, um, this space frame um, at the art gallery, at the Yale University Art Gallery. And um, so a, a design innovation that um, made it possible to reduce the, um, the floor to floor height of the building and ductwork could be tucked away in this, um, in this, within this, this uh, structure. And we are seeing uh, emerging here the, that separation of um, what famously uh, is described as the, the served and servant portions of the um, building that would be, that would find in some ways its, um, its finest expression at the Salk Institute. Here, though, first, I'd be remiss if I, didn't, um, if I didn't talk a little bit about the Richards Medical Laboratories because we w simply wouldn't have the, um, the, uh, the Salk um, were it not for this work, which was such a breakthrough for, uh, for Louis Kahn, in part owing to the recognition that he received um, for this building, celebrated already at the time of its completion. And it was, um, it was also an opportunity for uh, Khan once again to explore that that separation of um, of the served and servant portions of the of the building, the um, stairwells and such being moved to these to these um, pillars, you might say, that flank the um, the glass uh, classrooms and laboratory spaces that um, that the students uh, would use. This is a view from the, from the quad, I believe, so from the um, residences on the, uh, on the university grounds. Now, it is a building that remains in service, and um, we're told, however, that uh, for all the awards, uh, for all the recognition and, um, and renown that it earned uh, Khan, it was not ideally suited to its uh, purpose as a, as a laboratory building and um, for medical research. However, uh, Kahn, with the, with the, uh, under, um, under the right circumstances, would be able to sort of uh, to, um, return to that, um, that brief at the, um, at the Salk and really design a, um, a space that reminds me in some ways of our own exhibition galleries in that there is a, there's a flexibility um, at the Salk gallery, uh, or laboratories, I should say, that are, um, that are open, that can be adapted by each research team to its needs. And I think most remarkably, and this is something that Nathaniel mentioned when uh, he and I were in conversation, uh, we were, when I was um, moderating a, uh, a, a discussion with, um, with Nathaniel and Alexandra Ting and Suan Khan uh, yesterday evening, that the SALK um, continues to, to be uh, adapted to the demands of 21st century um, research. And so there's a, there's a remarkable uh, prescience in the, when we think of the team that, um, that designed that and that was able to, in some way, um, foresee the way that this, um, that this structure might be required to, to work um, many, many decades hence. Um, here is a, an equally influential uh, design of, um, of Louis Kahn's. This time, it's the, the Kimball uh, Museum in Texas, and I should mention uh, probably that this is the next venue of the of the exhibition, and so an altogether altogether uh, fitting one, um, given that will be it'll be an opportunity to to display the show within uh, galleries designed by by Louis Kahn uh, himself, and the um, the innovations here that again involve the use of um, of concrete, as I mentioned earlier, in the case of the Salk, are perhaps best illustrated. Um, in a view like this one of uh, the auditorium, in fact, at the, at the um, museum. But that barrel vaulted um, ceiling with its slits of um, the, the skylights that provide um, this remarkable uh, natural light, not perhaps ideally suited to an auditorium, but certainly um, a, a tremendous innovation in the, in the way that um, natural light could be used uh, in an art gallery. And um, well, Renzo Piano is among the, the architects interviewed um, in the exhibition, and I think of his designs at the, um, 
at, at LACMA, for instance, um, up the coast. And, and I think that we simply wouldn't have, um, we wouldn't have uh, museum galleries of this kind without the precedent that was set by Kahn's work at the Kimball. And um, I wanted to call your attention also to one of the great features of the exhibition, um, which includes models, uh, some of them uh, from the artist's studio, others that were built uh, in, the, in the 1990s for a previous exhibition, and then some remarkable um, contributions that, were, that, are, that are the work of the team at, um, at Vitra that conceived this show. And one of them is a reconstruction of, the, of, this, of this bay, this inglenook in, um, in the Fisher House. And it is one of the paradoxes, of course, of an architectural exhibition that we are invited to um, contemplate and, in some sense, experience buildings that are never present. Um, but the inclusion of the, of the model, the scale model of this particular, um, this uh, sort of domestic um, feature of Kahn's oeuvre, I think really um, does, it permits us to, to, to inhabit it quite literally in a way that is, um, that is, that also ties to the use of materials um, that we encounter at the Salk and, um, and, that, and that use of, the, of wood. And I think um, in, in the case of Louis Kahn, um, a, a use of wood which really ties to, to the influence of, um, of Shaker woodwork and, um, and the sort of master craftsmanship that he had become acquainted with um, in and around uh, Philadelphia. These houses, though, are relatively few, and, um, and they all of them are situated in, in and around um, Philadelphia, his, his hometown, and are perhaps less known, again, than the, the great monuments, which are such places of, um, of pilgrimage for uh, not only uh, architects, but lovers of architecture. I wanted also to, um, to pick up on something that uh, Anita mentioned already, and that is the, um, the, the great monumentality of, um, of Louis Kahn's work. And um, sometimes it, it is in, um, it's not merely a matter of scale. This here, the library at, um, at Exeter uh, Academy in, um, in New Hampshire is a, uh, it's a relatively modest structure, but that use of um, both the use of materials and the, the, the geometry um, the purity, you might say, of, of Kahn's um, design, together with a, an understanding of the building's function and, um, and its program. And so we were invited in this particular case to, um, we enter through this, uh, this extraordinary um, atrium, make our way to the stacks, and then are invited to take the books to the, um, to the, to the windows where they can be read um, by natural light. And so this, um, what is sometimes described as the, uh, the choreography of light, I think a particularly beautiful turn of phrase in regard to, um, to Kahn's architecture is really finely illustrated um, in this particular uh, design. And, and I wanted to, um, to relate it as well to uh, Kahn's global practice. This is something that I think many of us take for granted when we, um, we talk about the sort of globalism of the 21st century, we think it perfectly natural that a world-renowned architect would be working all over the globe. And, um, and in Khan's case, uh, that was notably in, uh, in India and in, in Bangladesh, among the last of his projects. Uh, but this was something quite uh, remarkable and in some ways unprecedented when uh, Khan undertook this. And we see, however, his, um, his ability to adapt his ideas to the, um, to the, to the materials, the, the landscape, the climate of these, um, of these different settings, and to do so uh, brilliantly with a kind of, um, I would say, a, there's a majesty, but also an austerity to the, um, to the brickwork, uh, for instance, here at the Indian um, School of Management, a sort of a um, uh, Harvard Business School of a sort that was, um, that was one of uh, Khan's last designs. And I wanted to, um, to conclude with uh, a project that is also featured in the exhibition. And um, at the very start of the show, you will see a timeline, a chronology of Louis Kahn's uh, life and projects. 
And you'll be surprised, perhaps, to see the last of those dates is 2012. Um, that is because this, uh, this project that uh, Khan had begun at the end of his life for a monument to, uh, to Franklin Delano Roosevelt on Roosevelt Island um, was completed only uh, very recently and according to, um, to Khan's uh, designs. So when the exhibition in its, in its thematic organization uh, concludes with a section called The Eternal Present, um, I think not only of his work, um, the parliament that he built uh, in Bangladesh, or, that, um, or the sort of um, timeless monumentality of that, of that um, Indian school of management, but also of the very long, um, sort of the long time of, of architecture and the, uh, the posthumous realization of this um, great monument, which stands, I think, also as a, as a monument to, uh, to Khan's enduring legacy. Um, it's, it's simplicity, it's gravity, it's beauty, um, in proximity to the uh, United Nations, and um, and I um, and I, I want you all to to sort of um, to consider this when you visit the exhibition, the um, the relationship between those few projects that Khan um, was able to to realize, and the um, and the many um, great but uh, but unrealized um, paper projects that are also uh, a feature of this exhibition, no less inspiring. Um, for their uh, for their sometimes visionary and um, and impossible uh, ambitions. So I will conclude on that note.